Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the pharmacology of calcineurin inhibitors. Calcineurin inhibitors such as tacrolimus and cyclosporin are immunosuppressants. They are used mainly to prevent organ transplant rejection in combination with mycophenolate and steroids. It can also be used for severe atopic dermatitis. They're not really used as much for rheumatological conditions anymore. Possibly can be used for lupus nephritis. Calcineurin inhibitors essentially inhibit the synthesis of interleukin-2. Normally, antigen-presenting cells, such as macrophages, picks up an antigen, a new one, either foreign or a self-antigen, processes it, and then presents it on an MHC class uh, 2 molecule on uh, towards T cells. Now, these T cells uh, will become activated, and they require interleukin-2, a key autocrine T cell activator. Activation of T cells will stimulate the adaptive immune response consisting of cytotoxic T cells, T helper cells, and then they will also activate plasma cells, the antibody producing cells. Calcineurin inhibitors inhibit calcineurin, a key protein required to allow transcription of interleukin 2, the key autocrine T cell activator. The mechanism of action is a bit more complicated. Let's take a closer look at how naive T cells become activated. So an antigen is presented to T cell receptors, which will initiate a cascade of intracellular events. This begins with activation of phospholipase C. Phospholipase C hydrolyzes phosphotidyl and inositol 4,5-bisphosphate, also known as PIP2, to generate the secondary messengers inositol 1,4,5-triphosphate, IP3, and diacylglycerol, DAG. IP3 increases intracellular calcium levels. Calcium binds to calmodulin, later binding to calcineurin, a calcium calmodulin-dependent phosphatase. Calcineurin, when it's bound to all this stuff, dephosphorylizes nuclear factor of activated T cells, NFAT. which when dephosphorylated targets the interleukin-2 gene to make interleukin-2 cytokines. Interleukin-2 is released by the T cells, which in turn acts as an autocrine molecule binding onto interleukin-2 receptors on the surface of the T cells. Interleukin-2 will activate this T cell and eventually will initiate the activation of the adaptive immune system. Cyclosporin is a calcineurin inhibitor, which works by binding to the intracellular receptor cyclophilin-1, producing a complex known as cyclosporin-cyclophilin. This complex subsequently inhibits calcineurin, which in turn stops the dephosphorylization as well as the activation of the nuclear factor of activated T cells. Tacrolimus is the other calcineurin inhibitor which binds to an intracellular protein called NKBP12. It then continues to form a complex consisting of the tacrolimus FKBP12, calcium, calmodulin, and then later calcineurin, which will inhibit the phosphatase activity of calcineurin. And when the phosphatase activity is inhibited, the NFAT doesn't get dephosphorylated. Calcineurin inhibitors have a number of side effects. Hyperuricemia, increasing the risk of gout, nephrotoxicity, hypertension and hyperlipidemia, as well as hyperglycemia. The side effects are more common in certain types of calcineurin inhibitors. For example, hyperglycemia is more common with tacrolimus. Hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and hyperuricemia is more common for patients using cyclosporin. 
I hope you enjoyed this video on calcineurin inhibitors and their mechanism of action. Thank you for watching.